Hi, my name is Steve Fox, and if you're watching this, I'm assuming that you are either new or a returning SharePoint developer who's interested in setting up their Office 365 development environment. Now, the reason we're going to talk about Office 365 is because as we move towards SharePoint 2013, you're likely going to be doing uh, some additional cloud-hosted development to what you already know. Um, and so that means you'll probably be doing that from Office 365. Now, in order to do that, there's four steps that we're going to cover today. The first is creating a new Office 365 account. Uh, and you can go to this extended URL here or just go dev.office.com, which will redirect to this URL. The second thing we want to do is, if you don't already have Visual Studio 2012 Pro or above installed, you can download and install a trial version if you want, 90-day free trial. Uh, and then you can download and install the Office and SharePoint developer tools on top of VS 2012. And then once you have all that set up, you can go ahead and create a new developer site within your Office 365 account. Okay, so let's jump out of uh, this PowerPoint here and jump into our, um, our browser experience here. So let's go dev.office.com first off, and then that'll take us directly to where we can start our journey. Now you see here there's a, a you know, few things that we can choose from. Uh, app building workshops, apps for, apps for Office, and apps for SharePoint, rather. These are great. They provide some resources for you that are new to you. Uh, and so you can go ahead and get started by clicking on these. Where we want to go is we want to click the Start button here and then jump down to Sign Up for an Office 365 Developer's Site. And then we want to try it free. Let's just go ahead and zoom in on the Try It Free button. Where are you? It's gone. So I guess we'll just zoom out again because my resolution. We'll click Try It Free. Uh, and there we go. That will take us to the portal experience where we can go ahead and sign up for our 30-day trial. Okay, so in terms of free trial, uh, our, our default 30 days will cover us on the Office 365 and we'll have 90 days to cover us on the Visual Studio. So in the least, you'll have a full month of building apps and deploying them without any cost to you. Now, if you go ahead and take a look, you can see that there's different information here that you have to add. There's no credit card information up front. They'll ask you for that later on after your 30 days have elapsed, and or at least as you get close to your 30 days. And here you can say uh, my cool uh, name, so your user ID at my cool domain. And then that will um, basically create a user ID. You would use this to sign into Office 365. You create a password, which is your admin password when you're, you're signing in. And then lastly, after you've proved that you're not a robot, you can click the Create My Account button, and that will go ahead and it'll create the tenancy for you. Now let me just jump over into my existing Office 365 account. We'll go back here and click on this and go Admin to Office 365 Preview, because uh, I'm just backing out of my SharePoint Admin console. You can see here that in the middle of my page, I've got current health and I've got the constituent pieces of my Office 365 tenancy all ready to go. Now you'll see on the right hand side, you should see when you create those, no issues for every one of yours. Now it's interesting that I have a service restored message because there was a recent service disruption to the identity service. However, you should very rarely see this type of message. And really what we're concerned with at the end of the day is this guy here. It's the SharePoint developer or the SharePoint um, SharePoint site that you want to set up. Now, when you go into the admin button up here, the drop down, you can click SharePoint and that will take you to where I backed out of just a, a minute ago, and this is the SharePoint Admin Center. We'll pop back into this in just a second. I just wanted to show you this such that uh, at least you recognize it when we come back into it. All right, so if I want to go ahead and go and download the tools, uh, the Visual Studio Developer Toolset, you can see that I've got Microsoft.com, WAC Visual Studio, WAC ENG, WAC Downloads. You can go to your favorite search engine, mine is Bing, and you can type in Visual Studio Download, and it should take you, or at least present you with an option to go to this page. You can see if you scroll down the page that I have a couple options here. I've got, you know, I can install now, or I can download, or I can have an image. Typically what I do is I download onto my laptop and run off my laptop in case there's any network disruptions. I don't have to start over. Uh, in this case, I actually downloaded the ultimate version, and I'm using that as my 90-day free trial. 
Above and beyond that, if I go back to my uh, my dev .off, let's just go back here and click downloads. Uh, one other thing you'll need to do is you'll need to download the tools. And you can see here, download the tools, this link right here. I'll just zoom in on it and I'll call it out for you in case you didn't see it. I can go ahead and click on that. And what that's going to do, that's going to actually download an EXE. And when I run it, it's going to provide me, it's basically going to launch the web platform installer 4.5 and provide me with the opportunity to install the developer tools. And all I need to do, obviously, is click install, and that will run through the installation process for me to install my developer tools on top of my Visual Studio 2012 instance. So great, as a recap thus far, we've logged into uh, to create a, a new Office 365 tenancy. You've downloaded and installed your Visual Studio 2012 uh, tools. You've downloaded and installed your Office developer tools for Visual Studio 2012. The only thing left was that fourth component and that's creating a developer site. Now if you jump back into our portal experience here and go new, you can see here as I zoom in that I've got new private site collection. If I go ahead and say private site collection, that brings up the opportunity for you to create a new site. Now if anybody here is returning for SharePoint, you've done this probably a zillion times. But here you can see that I've got different options. I've got collaboration, enterprise, publishing, custom. So custom is if you were to build a custom site template and deploy it, it would show up here. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on collaboration and click developer site. And this is basically, this is my new site. Uh, and it'll be my new site as the URL using this as our domain. And then, of course, we can add uh, an administrator to it. And, of course, add some resource allocation to it. Uh, and, of course, you click OK. Now, I've already done this, so I won't do it already. I'll click Cancel. And you can see here that this dev site was one I just created not too long ago. So I'll click dev site on there. And we'll go ahead and see. We can get some properties. Uh, you can see I'm the primary. Uh, you can see that I've got one subsite. That's the default that comes with the developer site. And I've got another other, you know, resource and quota uses statistics here as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on the website address, which will take me to my newly created Office 365 developer site. Now, this looks and feels like a fairly normal 2013 site. So, for example, I have, you know, elements here where I can go ahead and click on page and uh, the ribbon will show up with lots of different options and browse as well. So for those of you who are used to 2010 and used to using the ribbon, you can see and engage with those features in a similar fashion. The one thing that you'll see is different among the tiles, the live tiles, and some of the other features within SharePoint 2013 is the ability for you to deploy an app. And this is as far as I'm really going to go in terms of talking about how you deploy a new SharePoint app into your developer site. But in essence, you click Upload, and you can then point to your newly created SharePoint app and then upload it and have it installed inside and trust it inside of your SharePoint app. But that's for another day. So all in all, basically, once you've downloaded the these tools, you've created your site here, uh, and you're you know, on your uh, developer instance, or sorry, your Office 365 instance, you can then go ahead and file new a project, and you have App for Office and App for 2013, uh, for SharePoint and Office, rather, ready for you to go uh, to, to, to build, debug, and deploy uh, into your newly created Office 365 instance. So as a recap, if we just jump back to our slide here, we showed you how to create a new Office 365 account, so dev.office.com. You downloaded and installed the Visual Studio 2012 Professional. In my case, I installed Ultimate. It's a 90-day free trial. And the Office 365 is a 30-day free trial. And then, of course, you downloaded the uh, SharePoint and Office developer tools, which is a free add-on layered on top of your 2012 Visual Studio tools. And, of course, then you saw that we created a new developer site. And all told, that is, simply put, the four ways in which you can get yourself started. Once you've done this, you can go ahead and create some simple apps that you can build, deploy, and debug inside of Office 365.